ahead. Woo! Turn to your neighbor and say, it's going to be a long word today. It's going to be super long. I've been preparing all week, about five hours. So if you have five hours with me today, uh, I feel like the, the, the Lord has a word. So you see, I, I had anticipated that I was going to come and do like a rah, rah, wham, bam, thank you, man, uh, uh, to infinity and beyond message. <laughs> But I've realized that the Lord shifted my perspective and He wants me to speak into a season that we are experiencing here in the Big Island. And He wants to affirm us with this basic truth. And it's important that we're always reminded of this simple basic truth because this truth has helped every believer endure the times of famine, of pestilence, of wilderness. And the truth is this, it is the Lord that provides. Now some of you may or may not have noticed, but some of our stores got empty shelves. And there's a reason for that. The reason why there are empty shelves is because there's a shortage of workers over in the California harbor, in the California ports. So how it happens is that ships bring containers to the harbor, then they have workers that distribute the containers and the goods to the stores. Well, because of the shortage of workers, uh, not a lot of the goods are being shipped. And unfortunately, it eventually will trickle down to Hawaii. The Lord provides. <laughs> you see, this happened like in Las Vegas about a year and a half ago. When shelves were empty, it promoted panic, it promoted fear and some sort of paranoia where people just started taking. And, and, and when shelves are empty, what happens is inflation. In Las Vegas last year, about a year and a half, a pack of toilet paper costed $65 when it should cost 15 but I came here, the Lord has sent me here today to encourage you with this. It is the Lord that provides. The empty shelves don't provide for us. The Lord provides for us. You see, one of the things that I've learned from the Lord is this, that we don't allow emptiness on the outside produce emptiness on the inside. We don't allow fear and panic on the outside produce fear and panic on the inside. We don't allow crazy on the outside produce crazy on the inside. And so to a believer, what we do is we do not fear, but we confront fear with the truth. And the truth is this, the Lord provides. Amen? <laughs> it is the Lord that provides for us. He provides us strength. He provides us hope. He provides us food. He provides for us supernaturally. And today, I want to talk to us a message titled, Our Mana for the Future. You see, the word mana, biblically speaking, is, 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 and slightly spelled differently, is that miracle bread that the Lord had fed the children of Israel while they were wandering in the desert. So in a time of lack, the Lord provided. Now, to a Polynesian, the word mana means what? Strength, power, might. Hallelujah. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that in the midst of emptiness and lack, we don't be afraid. We know deep down in our hearts that the Lord will provide the manna, our bread, as well as the manna, our strength for tomorrow. And I'll tell you what, everything that you see at Hope Chapel Kona today, if I look back at a year ago, you know what? The Lord provided every step of the way. And if the Lord has provided last year, put a smile on your face, because why? The Lord will provide along the way. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> when I came about, when I landed about a year ago here in, in Kona, uh, uh, I, I sat in my backyard. I was supposed to quarantine for 14 days, but I was in my backyard, so I'm okay. I haven't gone to jail yet, so the Lord is gracious. <laughs> I sat in my backyard, and in our backyard, right at the property line, there are some papaya trees. How many of you guys love papaya? Yeah, I love papaya. So we have plenty of papaya trees. I love papaya. The good thing about it is that my neighbors don't like papaya. That means more for this guy. <laughs> But, but how many of you know that, that all of his glory, uh, the creation speaks of all of God's glory? Yeah. So, so the Lord speaks to me through his creation. He gives me nuggets and he, and he teaches me lessons along the way based on his creation. So as I sat and I observed the papayas, uh, all of a sudden I see this bird flying. That's a bird, by the way. <laughs> and I see this bird flying and the bird lands on the papaya tree and the bird starts eating the papaya. And I felt the Lord speak to my heart. Now, he speaks to my conscience. He speaks to my heart. And he says, hey, Bam, you see the bird? Yeah. What's the bird doing? A bugger eating our papaya. <laughs> he goes, check this out, Bam. 
Do you know that that bird didn't labor for the papaya? That bird didn't grow the papaya? That bird didn't seed the papaya? That bird didn't cultivate the papaya? That bird didn't fertilize the papaya? That bird didn't clear all the weeds around the papaya? And he said this, yet I feed him. And he told me this, and this, this brought me so much confidence to endure the wildernesses of life. He said, he said, Bam, if I can feed that bird, then I could surely feed you. Amen. Like supernaturally. Come on, I want to talk to this side because there's a couple of people that clap it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like supernaturally. They're served and growing the papaya, but out of the... The blue, his grace and his mercy, he provides for the bird. And if he can provide for the bird supernaturally, I've come to tell you that he can provide for us. Amen. Come on, somebody. And so if you are taking notes like you should, jot this down. The Lord provides for all. The Lord provides for all. Whether you are a bird, <laughs> handsome, good-looking, Wearing skinny jeans and big screens and smoke machines. God shows no partiality. If he can provide for the birds, then surely he can provide for you. Tap your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Now, this is biblical. In case you're thinking like, wow, man, he's just, he's kind of loony. He's speaking in nature. No, this is biblical. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, on a count of three, let's read this aloud. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Kasi, lua, kolu, say it. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Woo! Are you not of more value than they? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Are you not more valuable than the birds? And if, the bir if God can feed the birds, then he can surely feed us, man. And, and I got to tell you, me and my family, we've been a product of the Lord's supernatural provision. Like, mysteriously, things will show up in the mail, like blessings from the Lord. Just in her weakness, uh, said, I want to eat lao lao. <laughs> now, 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 some people, when they depress, they eat ice cream and chocolate. My wife, when she depressed, she wants lao lao. <laughs> and so, and so but, but here's the thing. She, she just didn't want any type of lao lao. She wanted lao lao from our good friend, whom we haven't heard of in, in like seven months. We didn't know if the guy was still on island. And so my wife said, I want Lao Lao from him. And I was like, babe, we haven't heard from him in seven months. Well, the week that mom passed away, the very week that Helen said, I want Lao Lao, I get a text from my friend I haven't heard from in seven months. You know what he said? He said, hey, Bam, can you call me when you get this? I want to talk to you. Prayer hand emoji and aloha. I called him up and he said, Bruh, I got some lao lao for you. <laughs> After seven months, he goes, I got some lao lao for you. Come pick it up. When I told my wife, uh, I, I'm getting lao lao, you should see my wife's back just straighten up. You should see the confidence and the affirmation and knowing that in her deepest despair, the Lord hears her and grants her the desires of her heart. Yeah. It was a miracle, Lao Lao. She never worked for it, but the Lord provided. <laughs> it was a Lao Lao of I love you. It was a Lao Lao of I am your comforter. I am your healer. I hear you. I've come to give you peace. It is a Lao Lao that don't fret, don't worry, don't fear. I will provide. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> so this is what we do with papayas now. So when the papayas are ripe, my wife, uh, we take some and we leave some for the birds. One of Hope Chapel Corner's greatest mana, greatest strength. This is our DNA. This is who we are. One of our greatest strengths as a church is this, is we love to share. We share stories. We share laughter. We share jokes. We share burdens. We share joy. We share music, we share the word, we share food, we share aloha, 
This is who we are. This is who we be. We are people that love to share. Amen. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got you. I'll share with you. <laughs> yeah. So what, what am I saying? I'm saying this. In, in, in light of the empty shelves, listen up. This is big. In light of the empty shelves, we're not going to be like the world that take, 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 and hoard. We don't conform to the ways of the world. We exercise what we are good at. We're not a people that are going to take, what we are a people of is a people that are going to share. And so as the stores are empty, wouldn't it be awesome if Hope Chapel Kona rises in this season to share all they have? Come on, somebody. <laughs> wouldn't we be a city on a hill, shining our light in the midst of darkness, when the world is in a panic and in fear, that we rise up, we confront fear by saying, Brother, sister, I got a couple of loaves of bread I'm here to share with you. Come on, somebody. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because that's how the kingdom expands. It's through our spirit of aloha and our spirit of sharing. So just as the Lord shared his papaya for me and the bird, then surely we as a people of God, 13 verse 16, on a count of three, let's read this aloud. Here we go. One, two, three, read. But do not forget to do good. Okay, time out. Okay, yeah. Do not forget to do good. The Lord is good, so you do good. But then watch what else he says. So do not forget to do good. One, two, three, go. And to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close with this. I'm going to give you some mana. I'm going to give you a word that will break every chain. What I'm going to share with you is so profound. And so deep that it will break every yoke of bondage upon you. It will remove fear and remove panic. What I'm going to share with you costs like trillions of dollars. But I love you too much. I'm going to give it to you for free. <laughs> what I'm going to share with you is something so deep and so profound. That it's going to empower you to be all that you can be in Christ Jesus. You ready for it? This is our strength. This is our mana. This is our DNA. Thus saith the Lord. Number two, let's do potlucks along the way. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> let's do potlucks along the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the overly spiritually folks are like, what? What was that? Potluck? What? 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 What's that? <laughs> I've been taught this to preach the gospel, but use words if necessary. <laughs> We're going to do potlucks along the way. Why? Because potluck is our love language. You know what potluck communicates? When you wake up in the morning and you make your dish, you're just not making it for yourself. You're making it for everyone else that's going to be there. It communicates you value. It communicates you matter. It communicates that I'm not selfish, I'm selfless. And so I'm going to take my time and the little money that I have to go buy some pork shoulder and throw it in the crock pot and make some Kalua pork, just not for me, but for everyone else that's going to show up on Sunday. The value of potluck, yeah, come on somebody. The spiritual essence and the value of potluck communicates togetherness. Don't do life alone. I'm here to supply and help as the world takes from you. Bro, I'm from Hope Chapel Kona. I give to you. I share with you all that I have. Come on, everybody. Give God glory. <laughs> so recently, my wife and I, this past week, we bought a small freezer. We've always wanted a small freezer. And, 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 and the reason why is I told my wife, I said, sit. I said, babe, you know your boy grew up in the jungles of Samoa? Straight up in the hood of Samoa. And, and, and you know your boy can hunt. That's why you love me. <laughs> you love me because I was like the last Mohican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, you love me because of that. And, and I said, you know, I, I have pig's pen, so I know how to kill a pig, clean a pig. Yeah. And I told her, I said, you know what? When the shelves go empty on the store, don't worry, you got a hunter. We're going to fill that freezer with fish, with some hog with some goats, because there's a lot of wandering goats around. 
<laughs> but I said, babe, and this is, we prayed over this freezer, and we said this, the freezer is not just for us to take and hoard. I said, the freezer is really for our potlucks as a church family. <laughs> and that everything that is stored in that freezer, when the world is empty, guess what? We can share and provide for one another. Listen, let's do potlucks along the way. That's who we are. That's what we do. Our success is dependent on us having potluck today. <laughs> this is our heart. This is our strength. This is who we are. And so um, after service today, I want you guys to stick around. Let's have potluck. Now, now, some of you are probably going to say, well, I, I didn't bring, I didn't bring, I didn't bring, I didn't bring. Blah, blah. My food is your food. Just bring an empty stomach. We're going to have potluck. This is our way of communicating. We do church as family. We'll leave no one behind. Let's be there for one another. As Galatians 6 states, we are a church that shares one another's burden. So if you didn't bring food, no worry, beef curry. We got plenty of food to go around. Let this be our mana for the days to come. In Jesus' name, can we give God praise and glory?